All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Jesus knew that all the troubles of mankind arose from ignorance of immortality, and Christ revealed to the people that man was spiritual and his unhappiness lay in a wrong belief. This belief amounted to this, that the natural world is all there is, and as man required something higher to satisfy him, the spiritual world was admitted and made to contain all sorts of witches and frightful things to keep the people in subjection. So this spiritual world, as it is called, has never been investigated as a science, and all revelations from it and allusions to it are steeped in mystery and superstition. Thus most of us are in this mystic land. We only know our bodies, and further than that we are in the dark. Christ is that revelation, a science of the spiritual world, which is a knowledge and cure of all the ills flesh is heir to. Let us see what were Jesus' ideas of death, and if they are like those of the Christians of our day. What did Jesus mean by these words? I came not to save life, but to destroy it, and he that loses his life for my sake shall find it, and he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Here you see he used the word death applied to persons that can be seen at this time. So if death means what we are taught to believe, then Jesus knew not what he said. Take it as you please. It either means an idea that can be changed, or it means the destruction of life, and then all he said amounts to nothing. I am certain that I know what Jesus meant to convey to the people, for I have seen death myself and eternal life that he spoke of, and can testify that I have passed from death unto life as he taught his disciples. And knowing this life that is in Christ, I teach it to you, not by opinions, but by words of wisdom that will destroy death and put you in possession of that true life that will make death only an idea like all other ideas man must get rid of to enjoy himself. I will state my belief and bring proof to substantiate it as true. Spirit is only matter in a verified form, and thought, reason, and knowledge are the same. To wisdom all these are only shadows of wisdom. Memory is the same. Our existence does not change. That is a self-evident fact. Memory is attached to this existence. It is not eternal, but belongs to the idea matter. The wisdom that keeps the body together is not seen nor admitted, but is an identity of itself. All mankind is one body of wisdom each having a self-existence in this wisdom. Moses believed that God governed man by certain laws and regulations, that he rewarded the good and punished the bad, and that he was the expounder of God's wisdom. Jesus as a man understood all that Moses believed and knew that his wisdom, or spiritual food, was all confined to man's natural life and if men lived up to the letter of that belief, they would die, for Moses never taught anything after death. But Jesus' food came from a higher wisdom, which made man an immortal, progressive intelligence. This truth he called his Father, and he prayed to it to guide him. When guided by this great truth, he was God, or the Son of God. Therefore, when he, the truth, spoke, it was God. He calls it the bread of life, and tells how it differed from Moses' bread or manna, for he says, John 6, 48, I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. 
He meant that this truth which he taught is the bread of life, for it taught no continuation of man's existence. Therefore all who believed in it died, and there was an end to them. His wisdom was the bread of life, or this doctrine of an eternal progression, and being superior to the belief of Moses, it assured that the wisdom of Moses was not the end of man. In the words of Christ, This is the bread which came down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die, which being interpreted means that if a man understands it, the bread of life, he will live when Moses' belief would call him dead. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. Moses was not this kind of bread. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Here is the difference between the doctrine of Jesus and that of Moses. The latter did not contain eternal life. Jesus did. One lived to die, the other died to live. If a man died to Moses' belief, he lived in Christ. Question. Do you believe in the immortality of the soul? Answer. I don't know what you mean by soul. Question. I mean that part of man that exists after death. Answer. What proof have you that man exists after death? The Bible. Is not all you say a belief? Have you any positive proof of it? The Bible is proof enough for me. Well, it is no proof to me. Question. Do you believe man has a soul? Answer. I never saw one, did you? No, but I have seen a body with a soul attached to it. That is only your belief about it. I know it, but do you deny that man has a soul? Never having seen one, I have no belief about it. Question. Do you believe in the death of the body? Answer. Do you mean to include anything in the body that existed before the body had form? No. Well, I am willing to admit that the body you spoke of may dissolve, and if this is death, I know it and have no belief about it. But we were not arguing this point. Can you separate the soul from the body, senses, and life? I don't know as I can. Well, I believe that life, death, senses, and soul all belong to the body and are of this world and have nothing to do with the real man, only as a medium. Then all beliefs in the Bible to you are false? I have said no such thing, but I do say there is no wisdom in any of these beliefs which can be shown. Question. Have you any belief in regard to death and what is called the future state? Answer. None at all as we are taught to believe. Exit Mr. Question and enter Mr. Atheist. Atheist. Please state your ideas in regard to man's future state as you understand it according to your theory. Answer. Well, I will reason with you with regard to my theory, and if you wish to ask questions, do so. I know that I am here, and that I can exist without the aid of my senses. Atheist. If you never had any senses, would you have known this fact? Answer. I cannot say that I should, but would that prove that I did not exist? Atheist. No, it would not prove anything. Well, you must admit that there are certain truths that exist and are known to some persons, 
but which have never come within your senses? Atheist. Yes. Then, it is not the senses which makes the truth, but the truth which is shown through the senses. Atheist. Yes. When you understand that life and death are conditions of mind like memory, then you will see that as long as you can remember anything, to you it exists. But when forgotten, it is dead to you. And I will show why I do not believe in the idea of death as it is taught. Every new development of truth which comes to the senses scientifically is a new birth, and its life is dated from that time, although it had existed forever. Man's senses to the mind are like science to the wisdom, to explain whatever comes up within its reach and truth uses the same senses to prove its existence and thus man, as we say, is the medium of truth and error. Every truth that comes to the senses existed before, while every lie or opinion dates its existence only back to its author. The separation of the bodily senses from the wisdom is not an easy task. For one has to prove what cannot be seen but yet exists. And I know it as well as I know that I have any senses. But to prove it to another is one of the hardest problems to solve. And yet, although thousands have known this fact, they have never been able to demonstrate it, so it has taken a stand of itself. The existence of a lie or opinion being begotten in the mind and afterwards developed through the bodily senses lives just as long as it is believed to be a truth. But when the real truth comes and destroys the lie, it dies, and that is the death of the body. The body of truth has its natural senses and faculties, but you cannot exist in the natural senses at the same time. For you might as well say that light and darkness can occupy the same place at the same time. I know that this higher sphere of existence is the habitation of every living person, yet the natural man does not know it. So he lives and dies according to his belief, and always will, until wisdom burns up his errors by the fire of truth or science. All religion is confined to the natural senses, and although all religious beliefs admit an overruling power, they cannot bring one particle of proof of it so as to convince another. Therefore their belief is of no use to mankind. Pupil, what do you believe about the immortality of the soul? Teacher, I have no belief about it. Pupil, do you believe that man has a soul? Teacher, I do not know. Do you believe in death? What do you mean by death? The crumbling and decay of the body? Yes. Yes, I believe in that. What do you call that which exists after the body crumbles? I call it the same that existed before the body crumbled. What is that? A part of God which can control matter. I call that the soul. Well, we will not quarrel about terms. Where does this something exist after the body dies? Just where it did before. Where was it then? just where it is now. Where is that? Where we are. Can you see it? Did you ever see it? No. How do you know then that there is one? Because I see the body moving about. So do beasts move about? Have they souls? No, perhaps not. 
Will you give me your ideas on this subject? Teacher, I know that I exist and this truth does not require taste, sight, or any of the five senses to prove it to myself. Does it to you? Pupil, no. Teacher, this proves another fact. That is that we can exist independently of the five senses. This part, which exists independently of the five senses, is what is immortal. But owing to a vague idea as to what soul means, I prefer not to use that term. I will call it the man. This man contains within himself the knowledge of the five senses. He also contains within himself all of the faculties of the mind, and by these faculties the man, wisdom, forms his own body. This by the world may be called an opinion, but I arrive at it by previous reflection. To this body he attaches the five senses, and thus life is given to it. If any accident happens to this body, and the man wisdom detaches his senses and faculties from it, the man has not lost anything, although the world may call him dead. But the world has never seen the man or his faculties, only their representatives or shadow. To the man the change is no greater than if he were to turn from viewing himself in one mirror to viewing himself in another. Life and death are to the world conditions. When the faculties are attached to matter which the world can see, this is a condition of life. When detached from that and attached to what the world cannot see, that is called the condition of death. But with wisdom the whole is reversed. Life and death are merely ideas that may be changed.